So hi, my name is uh, Gabriel and I've made this video to try to explain how to create your or how to make your these Chinese steel healer remotely operated uh, in a way that I did. So basically what you have is this app or it's an app where you can well, I don't really know if you can see it but it's an app where you could you know turn your heater on, you could turn your heater off, you can increase the uh, the temperature or the revs or you can uh, decrease the temperature. And so it as you might as figure out it, it does whatever the remote control does and, and that's because it works in a way where I have taken the signals off the, the remote control and I've programmed a unit to replicate those or duplicate those and send them to the wife uh, to send them to the diesel eater when I'm not around so basically how it works is you have uh, the blink app and you have a, uh, a Wi-Fi module inside your car or wherever your diesel eater is uh, and, uh, the Blink app sends uh, a signal to well to your internet down to your Wi-Fi module in the car, and the Wi-Fi module sends a signal to a RF transmitter or a 433 megahertz uh, transmitter, and that transmitter is what's actually sending the signal to your uh, to the receiver in the diesel heater. Uh, so it's it's a it's a 100% push system. That means it's it won't tell you what the it won't tell you anything back it would just send the signals uh, unless you have uh, set up sensors uh, different sensors which I do but it, that's a little bit more complicated but the code you'll receive is or the code that I will send to you is uh, uh, includes the sensor and all that other stuff but that's a little bit more tricky but once you have got this done you'll be able to control your uh, these leader from basically anywhere in the world or at least anywhere where you have internet so I hope it's uh, it's a good enough <laughs> instructional video and yeah, good luck. Okay, so let's take a look at this and see how you can make your own remote control device. Uh, we'll take a look at a few steps and basically it's, we're going to look at what is this, uh, what do you need, how do you make it and what's extra inside the code that you will be able to download after this. So what is it? Well, basically it all comes down to an app on your phone which looks uh, something like this it's a it's called the blink app and it makes you able to push um, and pull information from different devices uh, so basically you have this app where you could turn it's set up for Swedish of course because that's where I'm from so uh, it basically could uh, turn the heater on turn it off uh, lower the temperature increase the temperature and I have some extra features which involve a, a voltage uh, sensor, temperature sensor, and some if, the, if this then that functions. I also have included a, a graph here which shows me, uh, shows me uh, what voltage and temperature I've had over time. So yeah, and from this app I can control my car heater from anywhere in the world and I can control basically anything I want inside the car from wherever I want it. I also have this hooked up to a a camera so I can look inside the car and uh, I have it hooked up to Google Assistant so I can do all this stuff from just my voice which is pretty cool but today we'll focus on uh, on off and uh, increasing and lowering the temperature uh, so this is basically all you need you have your node MCU over here you have your transmitter over here they're connected with uh, three wires and that's it this this white thing you see is basically just uh, it's what's called a breadboard and it just makes it a little bit easier to connect but other than that it's that's all you need oh and the usb cable of course too to actually power this device uh, and it's very cheap you get the hardware from from this place uh, or you can get it from wherever but this makes a little bit sense to me it's cheap and it's you know i've never tried this actually actually this guy but this is usually how, how I order it, eBay or something like that. You need this part, which is a transmitter. Uh, and since I've already done the cloning of my uh, remote control, you probably won't need this thing. But if, you're, if the setup is not working, you might have to clone your own remote control and you'll do it with this, the, the receiver part. Transmitter and receiver. And to connect everything, you need a couple of pieces of uh, wires. You could do with any wires, basically, but uh, these are easy to use. 
you would also need some type of internet inside uh, or close to the, the the node MCU, since this the the node MCU only connects it to a Wi-Fi, and uh, you need an internet to be able to access the Wi-Fi or the the node MCU from all over the world. You need a computer, and that's for programming. You need some jumper wires. We talked about that. The USB cable. You need some software. Uh, you need the Arduino IDE. This is basically the software you need to uh, publish your code onto the Node MCU, and you need the actual code. This this I've done for you, which is very labor intensive, at least for me. That's not super good at this stuff. And you need a Blink account, which is self-explanatory. I hope. Okay, so how do you do this? The first thing you want to do is you want to set up your uh, Node MCU with your transmitter. Um, you connect them according to this. So this is what what's, uh, what's uh, what the sign on the Node MCU says: ground D2 and 3.3 volt. It's supposed to say not 3.4. And then you have the opposite side is the transmitter ground data, or sometimes it's spelled backwards. <laughs> Pretty weird, but that's usually how it is. And then you have the voltage in. So you connect it according to to that, and it will look something like this. Um, the next thing you will have to do is uh, update, or you will open the code inside the Arduino IDE, and that looks something like this. So now we are inside the Arduino IDE. And this is uh, this is the code. Uh, it might look a little bit confusing in the beginning, but it's fairly straightforward. This is probably not the most beautiful code you'll ever find, but it's it's working at least. <laughs> and I'm sharing it for free, so that's always good. Uh, the thing you need to look out for is this part. So you'll get an authentication token from the Blink app. You, you take that and you put that inside of here. And then you need your Wi-Fi credentials. That's the Wi-Fi you want the Node MCU to connect to. And it's Wi-Fi name here and password in here. That's basically it. You plug it into your Node MCU and you hit the, this button, the upload. And off it goes. Once you're inside the Blink app, you'll press a new project. You will choose a Node MCU somewhere here, wherever that is. Let's create a new, new project and you will end up with uh, something like something like this, but you won't have all the buttons over here. So what you need to do now is you will have to go to this plus sign. You'll choose a button. Oh, I don't have enough energy. Okay. So you choose a button you will get something like this. You press it, you give it a name, and now you have to make sure that these virtual pins, virtual three, uh, is correct considering the code that I have. So the virtual three pin would be on, or you could name it uh, whatever you want, is on, and it switches from zero to one. That means it's going to turn the heater on. You do that uh, uh, three more times, one for the off, one for the lower heat temperature, and one to increase heat. Uh, so you add those buttons, uh, you press play. And what you also will see up here is a, a little Thing which says how and when it got connected. This will become red if you're not connected and it will give you an error. But here it says, okay, it's been online since blah blah blah. Mm. You're connecting your buttons to your Node MCU. This, these are your virtual pins. Uh, V0, turn heater off. V1, increases heat. V2, decrease heat, etc. etc. So that's what you use to create your buttons, and this is what they will do for you. Uh, so once you've done that, uh, you have make sure your your Blink app is connected. It looks like this. Uh, you're all set. You can just try out your buttons. Make sure your uh, transmitter, the, that is this part, is not too far away from your receiving part, like the, the diesel heater, and try it. See if it works. And if it doesn't work, let me know and I'll see if I can help you out. Uh, I think the best way is to comment below because otherwise there's no way I'll, I'll find out. And yeah, that's about it. Um, there are some extra things inside the code which will be useful if you want to. Uh, if you want to explore it on your own, you're more than welcome. I think it's super cool if you want to. Other than that, um, 
I'll, I'll help you out if I have the time and if you're interested. So there's temp sensor, you've seen that. Um, so there's a temp sensor which tells me uh, the temperature right now, which is down here on the graph and also in, in numerical numbers uh, in centigrade as of right now. It could also be Fahrenheit if that's wanted. I have the humidity and I have the voltage coming this way. So you can clearly see here, okay, so the voltage dropping and here's the battery charger and then it, yeah, that's what it is. And here it's steady state charge type of thing. Uh, and, every, and all of this stuff is controlled by the Google Assistant. So that's pretty cool as well. Uh, that's a little bit more tricky. These other things are a little bit more tricky to get working. But uh, yeah, if you're interested, I could make a video about that as well. Okay, cool. Good luck.